Mad Sick Reggaeville. Reggae Jam 2013. This is Reggaeville. My name is Munchi and I am with the great Ayba Mar who came from afar. How are you feeling today? <laughs> you know, we're giving thanks, you know, we're loving the vibes, the weather is nice, you know, the people yeah. turn out and uh, they're loving reggae music and they're loving the positive vibes that we have to offer. So we just, you know, give it to them. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. And as I said, you just gave it to them. You just came off the stage at Reggae Jam. How was the performance like? Um, you know, it's quite different, you know, from in Jamaica, like, you know, the music really like when you get to perform live, you know, like it's like you got to really move the people. Like naturally the people are moving, you know, so they're loving the music, they're loving once the band starts to play, then everybody starts to move, you know what I'm saying? You know, in Jamaica it's more like a lyrical content that really rules, you know. Um, we love it and you know, we hope to do it like over and over and over again. <laughs> You're going to be in Europe for a little while and you're going to play some more shows. So what can the fans who haven't seen you perform today still expect from the show? Well, um, you know, it's been a while since we've been doing music um, and we've been, you know, representing, you know, reggae music. And we always try to keep it, you know, on a conscious level. And, you know, this is my first time in Europe, um, my first time in Germany, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, what we're really basically doing, we're having, we're having a tour, you know, and it's for like four to five weeks. And, you know, it, it, it is called Let Ja Lead The Way Tour. And the reason why we, we chose Let Ja Lead The Way Tour is, you know, that song, you know, has become, you know, one the popular song you know along with greatism you know but for let your lead away seem to be you know the more the, the perfect title you know because it represents the first and you know within everything that we have to do you know we have to you know have some kind of divine intervention and you know we ask for your guide you know and so we say let your lead away you know because it's our first time you never know <laughs> One of the last performances it, that you did in Jamaica before you came to Europe was on July 26th for Reggae Summer Fest. Yeah. Please tell me, how was the performance like there? Um, reggae Summer Fest is, you know, is very nice. It's my second time and, you know, it gives us the chance to really, you know, um, show some kind of growth, you know, so some kind of improvement in terms of how we move, how we sing and how we deliver the, those same songs that people hear on the radio and love. Um, I think that sometimes become, you know, difficult, you know, for many artists, you know, especially if you're young. You know, trying to get up in the music. Sometimes you become timid, you know, performing, you know, to a lot of people. But um, it's my second time, you know, so I went there so as to show growth. And, you know, I gave a nice set, you know, and the people loving it. And in Jamaica, you know, like the popularity for the song so people can sing along. So, you know, it's more joy. Mm -hmm. yes, I'm glad to hear that. One of the first, or basically the first single that you recorded, Had It Lost It, was with Max Romeo mm -hmm. in your mutual hometown, yeah. Linstead. Yeah. And at Summer Jam, that's what Max Romeo mentioned, that he had been working with you. How did you experience working with m the great Max Romeo? Um, it's very nice. Um, it was, um, like some people always ask me, like, you know, what would you call, like, you know, what would you see as your most difficult time you know in the music and you know I would say getting out there because many young artists have the difficulty of finding the right person to record with the right person who can get your song on the radio the right person who can get you into the magazines the right person who can really get your interviews and so forth um, Max Romeo at the time was a perfect person because you know he had some amount of popularity he gave us the opportunity to record you know we went there like three to four days you know you know back back and forth and you know we get a chance to record on the on the third day and you know after we recorded you know the song was mixed and you know it was out on on a on a um a various artist cd and you know came all the way here to europe you know i had a popular song here in europe before i even had a song in jamaica Mm -hmm. And also one of the other producers that you worked with was the late great Fatis Burrell. Um, how do you remember working with him? How what did you learn from this great producer? I think I think Fatis was more than just a producer. To me, he was he offered more than just you know production, you know music. He was more like a mentor, you know. And I always look to him for some kind of knowledge, you know, as a man who really go out there, you know, as an elder Rasta man too, you know. You know, we always seek knowledge, you know, and you know. So um, for f working with Fatis was very nice, you know, and. He's the kind of person who always say, um, Ibamar, you know, this is all you should you should look, you know, this is all you should say it, you know, and every time we record a song in you know, the studio I'm coming there for listen. So he's not the kind of producer who just, you know, give you, you know, a chance to record and put out a song. He's always there to really, you know, make some kind of adjustments. Nice. Yeah, man, it's it's very nice, you know, it's very nice and it's interesting because, you know, like while working with Fatis, you know, then came his son, you know, to work with me, same way and you know, we're still working together. 
Yeah, nice. Glad to hear that. So we spoke about the past productions and past producers, but what are the future productions <coughs> coming up from Ibomari? Um, I want to say one love, you know, and thanks to you know the Tough Gang family, you know, in Kingston, mm -hmm. and you know we want to thank Barn Rolling Production, um, which is Jermaine Edwards and Roland McDermott, which you know these are two people who are who play really integral part in the development of Ibama, you know, and the popularity of Ibama today, um, with songs like Will I Wait, Sound the Alarm, you know, and Born Free. And you know this is these are the, um this is the production that I'm working with. You know they manage you know you know majority of my music right now. So um, we're working with um, Notice Production also Unga Barunga. <laughs> yeah, uh, we work with Winter James also, um, Jukebox. But we're looking forward to have an album, you know, for this year, you know, because yeah. people been asking, you know, yeah. people been, you know, you know, shouting out, say, so, yeah. right, but we need an album, we need a mixtape, we need an EP. <laughs> so, um, still not sure if it's an album, EP, or mixtape, but you know, the people will have something to listen to. All right, so we're <laughs> definitely looking forward to hearing that. Iba, I thank you so much for coming to Reggae Jam, performing here today, and I wish you a great weekend still. Thanks for the interview. Um, it's very nice, and it's always lovely to talk to you. You know, <laughs> you, you always push me and give me a nice vibes. You know, thanks to the people, you know, who really love the music, the people who support Iba and support positive music. Keeping it positive is important. And there's only way we can move forward if we keep it positive. So, one love, Reggae Jam, one love, Reggaeville. Give thanks, Sela, Sela, Sela first, blessed.